to In The Chair, a podcast for Freemasons in England, the UK and around the world. Find out more at masonicpodcast.com. But first, welcome your host, Robert Bone. Hello there, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. I hope you're having a great day whenever and wherever you are. And this is, of course, In The Chair, a podcast of Freemasons about Freemasonry for those in England, uh, the UK, all around the world. Um, and anyone who really wants to find out more about Freemasonry, even if that's uh, not something you're actually uh, a member of yourself, feel free to listen. Um, you might notice that this is a little bit different. Um, I thought for episode 31, I would uh, try some different um, intro music for a change. The intro music, um, actually, funny enough, this was going to be the original intro music, but back last year when I was putting the podcast together, I uh, decided not to go for that one and, and went for the other one that you might be a bit more familiar with. And um, I was just playing around and realised I still with this one, so I thought for a change today, um, I'll use use that version. Let me know what you think. Um, obviously, uh, one of the reasons I just try, you know, use the and use my wife's voice and use that sort of music is I want to make sure that you know. Freemasonry is, um, well, with, with what I'm doing particularly, um, appeals to, how should we say, the more modern and younger generation. That makes me sound really old when I say that. I didn't mean it to come quite across like that. But, uh, you know, someone once suggested that um, I should open the podcast with the opening ode and those sort of things. But no, it's not, you know, that's not really the audience this is for. Um, the, you know, the audience for the, the podcast are people who are, how should we say politely, are younger, uh, not the typical grey haired Freemason who's got his provincial honours and all those sort of things. This is for, you know, people looking to find out more. And that, you know, particularly ties into the guest that we've actually got today, who is someone who's actually been on the show before uh, and he come through the university scheme so as far as freemasonry goes he is you know he is quite a young mason uh before we get on to that though just want to quickly say i haven't mentioned it for a while now but um what happens is with things like itunes and stitcher uh they don't actually keep track of how many downloads the show has how they rank uh podcasts in their search engines are um is based on how many um sort of reviews and how many sort of um, the rankings that people actually give a podcast to given uh, i think it's to stop people just basically sitting uh, at home and just clicking download 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 it only actually um rates podcasts on sort of the reviews and the stars sort of given so if you enjoy the podcast please let me know go on to itunes uh go on to stitcher you can go onto them by um masonicpodcast.com forward slash itunes or again for that for stitcher uh you need to just register and, and it, you probably have already you've got an itunes account but please uh, you know give the show a rating five would be fantastic but don't feel so i'm talking you into it but um you know bear in mind i'm just knocking this out myself out the back room of my house and uh, if you can write a little review on it as well and that way those search engines know that people genuinely are listening to the show and that means that when other men and other people who want to find out more about freemasonry uh when they start searching it's more likely that they it's going to show up in their search results and then they're going to stumble on the podcast and actually listen and and start finding out more about it and not just find those standard sort of like those standard websites the standard texts but actually to know um, the real people behind freemasonry and that's really what i'm trying to do with this so i just ask you if you can do that if you haven't done it already it would be greatly appreciated also i've been asking people through the newsletter which you can sign up for on the website and um also through twitter and it's for people to ask me um questions um i want to have a, a few q a sort of episodes and i've actually had some people that have asked me questions uh so far where i've actually thought i don't know the answer for that one and i've been hunting around and trying to get a guest on uh to yeah to actually try to answer some of the questions so if you have any questions about freemasonry whether you're a freemason at the moment or it's something you're interested in finding out about drop me a question and i'll either try to include it in a q a episode coming up soon or try to get an expert on to talk specifically about it uh you can drop me an email it's robert at masonicpodcast.com or go onto the website masonicpodcast.com there's a little contact form on there or get in contact through twitter and that's masonic podcast on the twitter 
Uh, so please get in contact with that. It will be greatly appreciated. I've had some great questions already, and it's um, trying, you know, trying to get hold of some people. And it's it's nice to know that I'm not just trying to put together interviews and conversations with people who I think might be interesting, but with you as the listeners. And I partly think you know this is your show as well. Yeah, you know, you're the ones that are listening to it. So please, you know, give me any feedback and input, and that would be greatly appreciated. But on to today's show. Um, this is episode 31. You can find the details for it at masonicpodcast.com forward slash 31. The reason is there's a few links in that we talk about in here. And whilst I was recording this interview, um, to be honest, I'd got, so, I'd got myself confused as to how many podcasts I'd actually done. And I couldn't remember if this was going to be 29 or 30. Turns out I'd already done those. We're actually already up to 31. Doesn't, doesn't time fly? But um, so I mentioned that now. So if you're interested, masonicpodcast.com forward slash 31. And that will take you onto the show notes with all the other links involved in there. And, and this is an interview from a chap that you might have heard already. He come on in the chair back in October 2015. It's Phil Konofsky. And he come on, first of all, because he was going to be going through the chair of his lodge, Greyfriars Lodge. And he joined through the university scheme. So we were talking about that. And um, I thought it would be quite interesting for a couple of reasons to get him on, partly because he's now pretty much gone through most of the ceremonies that he will be doing in his year, and his year sort of paralleled mine. He went into the chair about a month behind me. So it's actually quite interesting. We're still both in the chair of our lodges, but we're both now getting to the end of our years in the chair. So we're actually sort of talking about it, not as in looking back on, you know, back when I was in the chair, but, you know, it's more in the present tense, which is quite, um, there's a few sort of tips we talk about. So if you're approaching the chair yourself, if you're going through the progressive offices uh, it might be quite good to have a listen to this one because there's a few maybe tips uh, or thoughts that we have uh, which might be interesting and secondly because um, his last ceremony is actually going to be the 150th anniversary celebration meeting for Greyfriars when they're going to be having a special meeting so we, we talk about that as well so please uh, welcome back to in the chair Phil Konofsky from Greyfriars Lodge number 1101 Welcome back to In the Chair, Phil Konofsky, who's from Greyfriars Lodge. Now, Phil was on before, you might recognise him. It was back in October 2015 when we were talking about he was uh, a, um, going through the, um, the university scheme to go into the chair. So, Phil from Greyfriars Lodge, many thanks for coming on. Great to speak to you again. Great to be back, Robin. It's great. Uh, Robert, it's great. No, it's, it's um, great that you've been on. And you were last on, which was episode 11. And in case anyone wants to listen to that again, it was at masonicpodcast.com 11. That will redirect you through to hit, um, onto that one. And we were talking about you're going into the chair and that you actually come into Freemasonry through the university scheme. And it surprised me. That was actually way back in October that we were last speaking. And, you know, that's about six months ago now. And you were just saying you've, um, you're pretty much coming to the end of your year in the chair, aren't you now? Yeah, it's it's amazing how quick mm. uh, the year flies by. And I'm sure every master who's sort of gone to the chair for the first time has, has, has always said that. Mm. Um, and, and, you know, when you count it down, it, it is really only about seven or eight meetings yes. until, until you're out. Yeah, I'm not, well, with Kennet Lodge, we have six meetings a year because some only have, I know some lodges only have four or five. Some meet pretty much yeah. once a month, but most obviously take a break over the summer. And of course, you've got those six meetings, but one of them is um, you're being installed into the chair. Sometimes you might have past masters meeting or other things, and it's really you know actually really only got four or five meetings whilst you're actually doing ceremony. So all that time learning, and I mean, as we were recording this, by the time this comes out, the, it would have gone. But you're actually um, going to be doing pretty much your your last ceremony tonight, aren't you? Yeah, tonight's my last ceremony, and mm. uh, it's an initiation, so so it's going to be fun. Mm. How have, uh, yeah. yeah, how how have you found the last year? I mean, oh, apart from going quickly, how have you? Well, as I say, yeah, the last six months, or at least your t- your time in the chair. How's it? Um, how's it been going? Oh, it was fantastic. It was really, it was really an experience. Um, mm. I was in the fortunate position that every single uh, sort of meeting, apart from the installation, mm. we actually had some candidates, whether it be for initiation or passing or raising, and it was, it was great. Right. Um, yeah. So every every Monday got me working. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> yeah. It's, yeah. That's that's really good news because I I found that as well actually going through. Um, yes, uh, I know we did have to do a. Um, I think we did one demo. Oh no, I was going to say in. In Kennet Lodge, uh, we had, of course, Chris Butlin, who's been on the show a few times to go through and chatting about things. And we did actually um, have someone else come in uh, from another another lodge so we could do um, a, 
a uh, a passing ceremony on a on a on a candidate from another lodge. So again, I've had a similar thing. It's nice to actually do it with real candidates and not just do demonstrations. Yeah. So it makes it it makes all the learning a bit more. I'd say, but yeah, a bit more worthwhile when you actually know it's you know you are actually giving someone a memory they're going to be thinking about in years to come. Yeah, absolutely. And it's it's funny because obviously I've had a few repeat ceremonies and, mm. you know, after you've done it maybe once, twice, you get this um, this, this sort of uh, confidence that, yes. oh, oh, yeah, we, we've got, you know, I've got this again. Oh, it's going to be my my third time doing this, but uh, oh, I'm sure I got it all. And then the couple of nights before you, mm. you actually, you know, do the ceremony, you look at the book and you're like, oh, my God, there oh. are so many things that I forgot. I forgot about this part. I forgot oh. about this part. Whew. So, yeah, it's, it's it's really a funny one. And I actually felt that. Uh, last week when I opened the book uh, mm. to, f- to prepare for this initiation. And I was like, oh, okay, there's, there's a little bit more than I remember. Not too bad, but, you mm. know, I need, need, to, need to really brush up on it. Yeah, I mean, I was, I've had it where actually it seems to have gone in order, actually, for me. So um, my, first, really? my first ceremony actually in the chair was actually doing an initiation. Then it was a second degree, then a demonstration of a, a second degree, then a, a third degree, and then another third degree. And each one of those, you know, had gone in order, but they were always separated by a month. And the first Mm -hmm. month, actually, you seem to be a bit more, the pressure's on, it's the first time you're actually doing it in Lodge. But but the second time round, I actually thought, well, I only done this last month, you know, that the pressure's off a little bit. But it's surprising how how quickly it it goes. Don't just rely, because you could do it last month, don't just rely on the fact that it's still going to be there next month. Yeah, there's quite quite a lot to do. And um, I had done, I had gone through most of the offices or most of the chair of, mm. of the offices leading up to the chair yes and so i, I was in the fortunate position of of having done the deacon's roles and those mm. are always great so yes. even preparation and the wardens are also good but um at least big chunks um i actually still had in my head just from from mm. doing the ceremony as a deacon um and and it's great it's, it's yeah. really good to sort of have done that mm. um and another thing i'll mention is that yeah, as you mentioned, the, the first the first sort of ceremony, the first couple of ceremonies, you're you're a bit nervous and, and mm. you're just trying to remember the words and, 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 and saying them well and all this. And and then you sort of get get towards the end and then you you know, the words are kind of there, mm. at least ninety percent there. Uh so you stop worrying so much about about just remembering things and just saying it. Mm. And then you actually start focusing on how you say it and how you become it's, a bit yeah. more of a showman. And I, I think it's really important that, you know, it, it's worth mentioning that no one gets it you know with this level of showmanship just mm. from the get-go it takes time it takes practice yeah. you've got to learn it and actually yeah that's um a, a great way to put it of you know you you sort of you know being a bit of a showman so i remember going through you know i was learning some of the bits a while back and i was trying to and i was, I was so annoyed because i was i seemed to have all the words but most in the right order and there was a few little bits here and there that just seemed to not be quite right and i could never quite get them and you know, and I started stressing about it, and then I, I realised, hang on a minute, this is my first time through the chair. Um, at the moment, you know, it's uh, I've got my little you know light blue apron on and everything, and I suddenly realised, hang on, if I pretty much get this right, but maybe have a few little errors here or there that that doesn't distract from it, that doesn't I don't miss chunks out or any prompts. As as long as that momentum's going that's actually better than trying to be absolutely word perfect but sounding like a robot yeah absolutely i, um, I had mm. that yeah i had that piece of advice like the the, the, the first evening i was installed in the chair mm. which was that i was going to be my worst critic i was going to be yeah. the one to, to to beat myself up about it no one else was going to mm. was going to to pay attention i mean even the candidates themselves they probably don't know the, everything word perfect no. so, you know, of course <laughs> so they they're, they're just going to be enjoying themselves exactly. and even the, and the if, past uh, masters you know they're like Ooh, you know yeah and i think what would happen is if you start having a candidate who's who's remembering sort of someone getting prompts and stammering and mm. trying to do it and it sounding like a robot whereas someone especially things like the working tools and i know in our lodge um the working tools isn't actually done by the master anyway it's normally someone else does the working tools but if those are done and they're done well with someone then it's things that you know rub off and you know the tra- traditional history and those sort of things i still remember those bits but uh if someone just went through it like they were reading it out of the book like they're reading it off of a page that they've fi- you know photocopied into their mind yeah it doesn't i don't think that you know comes across so well but then on the flip side i think well maybe if in years to come maybe you know if i were to go into steward's lodge or if i was to be you know had any sort of acting provincial rank or anything which you know that would be a a long way down the line not saying that's what i'm looking for but (laughs) then 
that's when then the pressure would be on to get it word perfect. But at the moment, I think, you know, um, I think some people do put a little bit too much pressure on themselves of getting it 100% right. You know, to be honest, 99% is good enough. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and, and just touching touching on mm. that point you meant about like learning things. And, and um, you mentioned in your lodge that, for example, the working tools aren't done by the master, mm. but by someone else. Sa- same in mine. Mm. And um, because we're, we're a university lodge, we do get a few younger members. So as much as possible, we try to, uh, let's say, delegate some, mm. of, some of the work out that would, I imagine, normally be done by past masters or, or, yes. or, or, or older members. Mm. And it's really it's really interesting to see certain bits of ceremony, especially things like the traditional history, actually mm. being done by by someone a lot younger. Okay, uh, and it's 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 really a it's really a pleasure to see, mm. um, even as a master, that you know the, the people who are sort of the same the same level as you in in, in the sense, uh, mm. sort of age group and sort of they come from the university scheme and all that and they're doing different parts of your ceremony ceremony mm. um, not just the same past masters and not just the same people that that have done it to you, but also sort of like passing the torch on to also the newer people. Right. And, and, and it's really good. And I appreciate that, 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 you know, you need to have an active lodge to, to do that. And sometimes mm. it's not so easy. Yes. Um, but, you know, it, it, is, a good, it is a good thing uh, to mm. see. And it's, it's, it's really good to be part of. Yeah, I think it's important as well. And I've mentioned this many times on the podcast. I think it is important for, you know, younger. And I say younger as in sort of, you know, in Masonic terms, you know, Master yeah. Masons to, you know, get them involved, even if they're not, you know, maybe taking an office straight away. For example, Chris, who's just gone through, uh, you know, he's just been raised. In theory, you know, was the talk of actually, well, you know, he, he could go in, if he's eager, he could go in his inner guard, you know, straight mm-hmm. away, you know, next year. But then the other parts are thinking, well, actually, he could go in as steward. But either way, if he doesn't sort of go in his inner guard, if, he, if he's just going to be a steward for a year just to sit back and let things go, it would still be good if he were to still do something like the working tools or get involved in part of it. Not every single ceremony, but just once or twice through the year, just to give him a little bit of stand up and, and something to do, because then it just sort of gets you. You're not in at the deep end, but at least you're getting your feet wet. You're having a paddle into it. Um, and I do think that's one of the things where if you don't do those bits soon, it can um, start becoming, it's a, it's a steeper climb to go. No, absolutely. I'm a big advocate mm. of, of, of getting in early, doing mm. a bit of, doing small bits of ceremony. It doesn't yes. have to be major and just mm. building yourself up. I mean, my, my first, when, when I was um, raised the, the next year, my first role, my first office was actually assistant director of ceremonies. Okay. And, and that was fun and, um, and you know, got, got to experience that. And mm. yeah, it wasn't a major role. I mean, how many things do we do? Yeah as adcs but it was it was still it was still something that got me working not just mm. sitting there and watching things happen yeah. and, and I, I love that that was great um mm. in, in fact some of the talks in my lodge is uh are that when when i'm i'm done from the chair and and when people start retiring i might end up taking the dc role in my lodge just right. because i'm quite a, a, a stickler for for detail and, and yeah. ceremony so yeah That's, uh, that to be honest that is what makes a good dc i think it is what someone who is a yeah has a has that eye for detail and you know and wants it done properly is always yeah. a, a good way which ends up annoying everyone else but it then means that i always think you know the lodge does run better and smoother and yeah it's it, when you have guests and when you have visitors it's always you always want to have that little bit of pride in you don't you and hmm. i think you know having a, a lodge run you know smoothly like that i mean actually what's good is that you're already thinking about what office you might be doing because i always you know part of my dreading is sort of like you know going through the chair and then doing a year as ipm and then after all that build up you've spent all those years learning all that and then you just suddenly get stuck on the sidelines um yeah with with nothing to do uh which actually with kennet lodge probably isn't going to happen because we're we you know we don't have a huge amount of members so there's always going to be something for someone if someone wants to do it Sure, but I think that was um it's good that you're sort of you know thinking ahead that way as well and thinking right what can I do in the future yeah and yeah it, it is it is as you said one of those fears mm. I think that that after all this time and after all this build up the last thing you want to happen is that all of a sudden you have nothing to do mm. um, I mean don't get me don't get me wrong I like the social aspect and, and meeting mm. people that you know I sometimes only meet for that one meeting sure um like once a month uh, so and so on but you know you still want to be able to be engaged and active in the fraternity mm. I mean, that's that's you know part of it isn't it yeah and I think well actually that's when I think is a good time to start joining any side orders or those sort of things as well um, mm-hmm. I know lots of people tend to join sort of chapter and those things one they're going through the deacons chairs um, but or the, the, you know the deacons offices and for me I found personally I had to sort of um, 
sort of I've taken a bit of a holiday from chapter just purely because I found there was too much going on and then in the back of my mind I thought once I've gone through the chair what will then happen is I'd have conditioned my mind to doing all the learning I would have been used to standing up and learning this and and doing the ritual yeah um then that's the perfect opportunity to go right what's the next one on the line yeah I've got a you know a I've potentially got a long Masonic career of, you know, spanning another 30, 40, 50 years in Freemasonry ahead of me. Why should I try to cram it all in within the first 10, 12 years and, you know, and then spread, you know, spread it all out? So um, that, that's uh, something to bear in mind as well. I think, you know, looking at the side chapters later on down the line. Yeah, I mean, I think um, as, as soon as you raise, sometimes uh, mm. some older members will sort of say, hey, do you want to join this? Do you want to join mm. this? And I think that's good. And, you know, I was suggested, uh, as as many of us are. But then I thought, ah, let me go. Let me just mm. enjoy craft for a bit. And then I'll join the side orders when I have um, yeah. less less to do in craft and, and a lot more time. <laughs> I think that makes, yeah, for me, that makes sort of sense from my point of view. And, um, yeah, I've, I've spoken to a few other people about things. And they said, yeah, just, just because you can join at a certain point in time doesn't mm. mean you have to um because it does all otherwise all start snowballing and you all at the same time and suddenly you find you're going through the chair you know and then you go at your sojourner and sort of chapter whilst you're going through the chair and this and then <laughs> something else in knight's templar and it all starts coming together now, um, we all we all know mm, people people who are in, yeah. in multiple high up offices in in, in multiple in, orders yes. so um <laughs> actually some i mean some something i actually want to try to explore a bit more actually and, and get a few more people on um on the on the podcast to talk about side orders and those sort of things because it is quite an interesting sort of side of things um so ho- hopefully that'll be something to um talk about and you might find you know it might be an interesting listen to as well you know in the future but yeah, um I, so um going back to greyfriars lodge you've got actually when you of course you're gonna have your installation actually let's just jump ahead quickly so jump ahead to the installation of your successor that's going to be happening is it october next year no october this year uh the is installation it? will happen in our november meeting. oh november meeting right yeah so, yeah, so and you come through the university scheme do you know who your successor is going to be yet um we're we're not sure the person who was initially going to be uh, my successor who sort of came in the year after mm. me in the university scheme um he was offered a, a phd in cambridge right. so he's moved Ooh. he's now moved to cambridge right uh, so, so he's and, and and he's I think joined the lodge there and 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 he's he's, he's sort of um, doing doing his Muslim oh okay there at the right so the so we're not really sure exactly oh, okay. who will be taking over I mean we have someone in mind and if mm. and if and if he's keen then then um, it it'll sure. you know he'll become but if if not there might be an opening for a for a second year for right me, which, yeah which, which is you know <laughs> yeah well, as I said um. I'm, that's what I'm going to be doing in Kennet Lodge. It's um, a second year, a second term. And, you know, so many people said when I was going through the chair of, oh, you know, just as you're starting to get used to it, you've got to hand on to someone else. And when the opportunity arose for me to sort of stay in the chair for another year, I thought, actually, let's, you know, so many people say, oh, you you know, if only you could stay in for a second. So when, when circumstances aligned that that was an op- option, I thought, well, I might as well take it because so many people say it's a shame you don't have the opportunity. So when it did arise, um, so, you know, I'd say, yeah, if the opportunity does arise, um, it might be worth taking it. But obviously, you know, you've got to do it all fairly and see if anyone else in Lodge is going to, you know, going to be doing it. But I was, I was just curious whether your successor would be a university scheme person. Yeah, no, it, that was the plan. But unfortunately, mm. uh-huh. you know, things things change. But uh, but yeah, you know, if if a successor is chosen, then I'll be, you know, more, mm. more than happy, you know, to, to carry on as as normal if if i'm given the opportunity for a second year sure i don't know i guess i i, I like like you say probably take that opportunity mm. why not um you know might as well uh hit the ground running as it were for, yes i mean you spend year. all so that was the thing i've spent you spend all this time rehearsing going to lodge of instructions and rehearsals <laughs> and all these other things to learn it and then it just seems to suddenly fly by that part of me was thinking well it was um you know it's a bit of i wouldn't say a waste of all the effort but it'd be a good way to try to make a bit more um, get a bit more out of it by you know doing it a second time round, and I'm sure you know it's it's not just doing the ritual; it's learning when to as the how, how the whole meeting runs together. You know, um, yeah, going through the agenda of the meeting and knowing when to gavel and knowing how to hold the vote and making sure that the minutes of the last meeting have have gone through properly. And it's silly little things like that which you don't really think about until you're actually in the lodge one day and you're saying right the next item on the agenda is to put forward confirmation of last you know last meetings minutes 
and it's one of those things where you just kind of sit through and sort of turn off when it's someone else and suddenly you've got a whole eyes of the lodge and all their visitors and guests are on you um yeah. and and those are the, the sometimes those are the moments which can be a bit more stressful um because actually you know the ritual you've been practicing and rehearsing for the last seven years this is something where you've kind of forgot you actually have to do um yeah it's it's sort of like mm. it, like it's, it's being a leader it's essentially yeah. yes. it's essentially mm. doing that and yeah that that's a bit improv you know it's a bit of mm. just understanding the situation and and at the same time, not only just saying things well, but sometimes saying things into you know in an entertaining mm. manner. Yeah. Uh, because as you said, all eyes are on you. Well, you're you're effectively the chairman. You're chairing a meeting, really, aren't you? Yeah. So, and and it's those sort of things that I don't think some people sort of you don't really pay too much attention to when you're going through the chair, and suddenly you find yourself in the chair. You've got to you spent the the I found the first two or three meetings in the chair, giving yourself a crash course on how to do this, and you're you're self teaching. And it's not really until it's towards the end of the term that you actually kind of get to grips with the the admin, the logistics of you yeah. know, being a master and, and not just not just the words in the blue book. Yeah, I agree. I mean, that mm. was something that, you know, in, in, in my first meetings, I, I experienced the sort of the, you know, anxiety of, oh, mm. I, I'm now all of a sudden in the chair. And sure, I, I could have the words and I'm, I'm really good at the ritual side mm. of things. But now all of a sudden I'm leading the meeting. Mm. And that's that's really something that, you know, just takes time. It takes time to, to, to grow into that role. Yes. And and even when it comes to the festive board, just, you know, standing oh, yes. up and having to, to say basically one of the last speeches of the evening. Mm. Um, and again, all eyes on you, and that's that's something that in in my in my lifetime I haven't had to do no. in, in in such a capacity until uh, Freemasonry, and that was something that's like, oof, okay, this is um, you know you have all sorts in your lodge that are very good at being mm. able to stand up and just say things and you know mm. laughs and and cheers and all that kind of thing, and you know it's it it sometimes can be a bit like, oof, okay, now I, I gotta I gotta follow this up, you know. I yes. gotta, my my yeah. best tip of advice is unless you're a natural comedian and you're naturally good at telling jokes repeating a joke that you heard at a lodge meeting last week generally should be avoided <laughs> are you that speaking my... from personal experience no well no, experience of having to not saying it but from actually having to sit in a sit and be in the audience is probably the best Ooh. way to put it <laughs> when that's sort of like yes that probably would have been funny the first time you had heard it when it was given by someone who was a natural you know had the comedy timing but just because it sounded amusing at a meeting last week doesn't necessarily make it a great way to close the meeting this week. Yeah, uh, oh, and that, that's oh. that's my advice to whoever, whether you're in, in the chair or whether you're giving it any sort of toast or speech or response. Um, if you're not naturally the person that stands in the middle of the room telling a joke, don't bother with a joke. <laughs> yeah, you can have, you can have a whole other episode mm. on this podcast about bad badly timed jokes or that, or how to do public speaking. That might, <laughs> to be honest, that might actually be a good idea to do that. Yeah. I'm sure there's probably a few people listening to this that probably are actually thinking that would be a really good thing to that is yes, some maybe something worth actually doing about you know public speaking because that's the thing is sometimes people find themselves in the spotlight and they've they've never had experience and because a joke or so they've seen someone else do something that went well they don't really realize that there's more to it than just and just like with a ritual there's more to it than just saying the words yeah know, there's there, there's a lot more to it to um do that but um going on to the, the other ceremonies there's actually you've got a uh, gray friars lodge has a meeting in may which i think we spoke about before which is um but you're not although you're going to be master of the lodge at the time you're not really going to be involved in the meeting are you well it's um well, let me tell you a little bit mm. more about that meeting. So it is actually going to be Greyfriars' 150th anniversary, right? And uh, we've planned something special for that. And yes, it's going to be a it's going to be a meeting in the sense that we're going to you know we're going to open the lodge and we're going to we're going to just go through a couple of agendas. But then mm. um, we're going to have a group from uh, up north with Black Country come down, right. and they're actually going to deliver a uh, an initiation ceremony. Uh, as it was back in the Industrial Revolution, back in uh, 1700s and, and earlier, and this kind of thing, and it's going to be uh, really interesting, and, and I can't I can't wait to see it. Mm. And that's because um, you know, I've got the notes. Actually, what I would do is I will pop um, some of the details actually onto the Masonic Podcast website about this because it's being done by the Black Country Demonstration Team, which is um, they reenact basically a lodge meeting um, from the 1800s, isn't it? Yeah, mm. that's it. And so, um, so it's not. So it is actually going to be a demonstration. So it's not really um a real candidate, but someone plays the candidate and yeah, pretty much you know does it. Um, and it, it's not emulation ritual, is it? It's going to be different as well. It's what basically um, 
the, the, the details. Um, is it was it um, lo- Black Country Logic? I'll yeah, I, I, mm. Which you was, know what? I, mm. That's the thing. I didn't I didn't look up too much about it because I just wanted to be surprised. I knew right. that oh, that I've ruined it for you. No. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, I knew they were going to have a demonstration. Mm. It was going to be something different, and and I, I'm I'm just really looking forward to see it. Great. Well, I think what because um this uh, this podcast is um is episode um i think it's episode 30 sorry i've got um it's either 29 or 30 i should have checked all of that so but what you can do is go <laughs> on to masonicpodcast.com forward slash 30 or number 29 and that will um take you onto the show notes there and what i would do is i'll put links in that to um I've got a, a, do, a document you emailed me which uh, goes through a little bit about what's going to be happening that night as well as some links to go onto um, your Lodge website and um, an email address so that you can um, people can contact the secretary. Uh, we'll just go through... Actually, we'll just um, go through the date of that. It's the 11th of May, isn't it? Yeah, that's 11th of May and I think it's about 6, uh, six o'clock start or 6.30 right. or something like that. And uh, yeah, anyone's invited, just please contact the secretary. Mm. Um, you know, happy happy to have uh, have people come see the, see it. And that's actually going to be at Sindelsham Masonic Centre, which is near Reading in uh, Berkshire, the province of Berkshire. Um, I'll just give the, the, there's not too many details, but I'll give you the, um, the lodge, uh, your lodge website is greyfriars1101.org.uk. And Greyfriars is spelt G R E Y F R I A R S. Greyfriars one one zero one dot org dot uk, and that will take you on um, visitors onto the Greyfriars Lodge website. And from there, you can sort of obviously contact the secretary uh, to say that you you know you intend on going. Uh, I'm assuming people need to book on by about a week beforehand, wouldn't they? Yeah, I think that would be good. The sooner, the sooner, the better. The sooner, just the so better. Can, yeah, you know, and it's, numbers. Mm, and it's going to be in the big lodge room. I'm assuming at Sindelsham. And even people who haven't been to Sindelsham Masonic Centre, and um, there's a, is a really nice big lodge room there, which seats. Um, I think it goes up to about three three hundred or so. Um, a little balcony. It's not not quite as big as Grand Lodge in London, obviously, but it's a you know it's a very nice room. And I I do know that um, you know people are worried that it's going to be um, it's. I don't know if you're planning on selling out, but there's going to be a lot of people going there, aren't there? Yeah, I think so. I mean, mm. it's it's one of these, you know, rare occasions where you get to see something different mm. to what you you normally get to see. And, and it's the 150th anniversary. Exactly. Well, I was going to say, it's going to be just, you know, just purely because it's the 150th anniversary, it's going to be a big occasion as it is. So yeah. to mark it with doing something like this, um, that, you know, that is going to be a fun evening. Uh, I've I haven't actually seen this before, but I have heard um, about the Black Country demonstration team and um from other people that have actually visited meetings where they've been at and they they have said it is actually a really a, f- a really good fun evening they they do embrace the character they do get into mm-hmm. it and it is um and it you know it's very entertaining it's not like um it's not like probably a regular lodge meeting where you're just sat there and you're just sort of watching the same same thing that normally happens it is um you know they have actually made it a unique experience so uh, you know that's definitely going to be um, I'm going to hopefully, fingers crossed, going to be attending that myself anyway. Um, oh, um, if, in case anyone wanted to contact the secretary directly, um, the email address uh, for, for Greyfriars Secretary is s1101 at barkspgl.org.uk. So I'll just say that. But again, all those links are going to be in the show notes. Hop onto the Masonic Podcast website. And yeah, hopefully... Um, even if people aren't in Berkshire Province, if you can get to Reading, very good links into Reading from London. It's actually really close to the M4. So if you're in West London, it's pretty much just about a half hour drive out of London and you'll be in the car park. So if you're a London Mason, you want to sort of get into the provinces a little bit. Um, this is actually going to be a perfect meeting and as well. Um, anyone up north, it's quite good to get to. And also um, on the borders, you know, Berkshire is actually got a really good location so, you know, hopefully, if you're listening to this and thinking it would be good to um, get out and about and not just um, visit pro- um, some a, a lodge in your province, this would be a, a good starter, wouldn't it? Yeah, mm. absolutely. So, fingers crossed, we can get a few support, a few listeners in the chair to come along and uh, and support you and build the audience up because it's going to be your your apart from the installation, it's going to be your last meeting in the chair. Yeah. Uh, so true. it would be good to get as many as many faces and you know eyes staring at you as possible. <laughs> just <laughs> Definitely to kind of, go out with a bang. Yeah, exactly. Sort of uh, put put the pressure on you a little bit if you can. Although saying <laughs> that, you'll you'll be handing over to someone else to um to be doing that. 
Um, so Phil, it was um, great to have you back on in the chair and um, you know to talk about and talk about your time. And I'm really pleased that you have had a good year, although it's not over yet. That you are well, you know, you're having a good year in the chair yourself, yeah. and you know, good for Greyfriars Lodge. I'm hoping the brethren of Greyfriars Lodge have enjoyed your you know, your time. I'm hoping they're. They'll, they'll look back on 2015 and 2016 year with with fondness, and yeah, hopefully you, you hopefully you've done well there, giving them you know giving them some good memories. Yeah, um, I hope so it's really good as well that the university scheme is actually working really well, and you've got you've you, you know you've brought in some more you know candidates. Actually, with the candidates that you, you've initiated a candidate during your term in the chair, haven't you? Yeah, and yes, did, sir. did that actually come through the great um the university scheme or? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, okay. It, so, oh, it that's is still active. Still, still active. Still bringing yeah. in that. That's great. I mean, and you, you're bringing you know lots of people in. And to be honest, Greyfriars is one of the, the thriving lodges in in um, in Berkshire, which is good. And you know, I think the the university scheme is definitely something to do with that. And with that, if um if people are listening to this and wondering what we're talking about, best thing to do is listen to number uh, podcast eleven. Find that one. I know that one off the top of my head. That's masonicpodcast dot com il- uh, forward slash eleven. And that's all the links onto there, and that links onto the university scheme website and all those sort of bits and pieces as well. But uh, Phil, I will let you get on. Uh, I know you've obviously got a bit more preparation because you're doing um, another um, insta- um, another initiation this evening. Yeah. Uh, so you do just want to you you want to have a couple of hours just to have a, um, a bit of a refresher ahead of tonight, I guess, and then just clear your mind and think about other things, and hopefully the words will come out in the right places. Yeah, I'm hoping for that. I definitely want to have a, a good, a good as as we talked about earlier, just a good uh, show mm. to, sort of, to sort of wrap up. Yes, it'll be yeah, good. So uh, hope hope it goes well, and I'm, I'm glad you've enjoyed your year. And you know, maybe if you if you have the opportunity, if it does come, up, you know, to do a second year, then you know, obviously take that. You know, but if not, obviously, you know, maybe sometime you know in the future you'll be able to you know come back into the chair either in Greyfriars Lodge or or another lodge or something, and you know, use that experience again. Oh, I'm sure it it, it tends mm. to happen. You will you will be master more than once. I yes. think in your Sonic career. <laughs> yes, I know a few people that have been masters of you know quite a few different lodges and things over the years, and it's you know they've barely had a year where they've not been a master or in the chair of something somewhere <laughs> along the line. You know they yeah. are quite serious about it. But um, okay, well Phil, I'm going to let you get on. I'm sure you want to get back to that little uh, blue book just to have a little bit more of a refresher. So uh, many thanks for coming on once again, and just for. Just to repeat, that was uh, Phil Konofsky. So you're from Greyfriars Lodge, number 1101. And just to recap, the email address, uh, well, the website address is uh, greyfriars1101.org.uk. And that's spelled with an E in grey, not with an A, as I always tend to do, but with with an E. So thanks very much for coming back on. Great speaking to you again. Really pleased to hear that Greyfriars is doing well. Uh, You've got plenty of new candidates also coming through the university scheme and that you've enjoyed your year in the chair as well. Yeah, thank you very much. I have enjoyed my year. I hope you've enjoyed it. Yes, enjoyed I've, I've enjoyed well. it. And I know I've, I've visited your, at your installation and hopefully yeah. I'll, I'll see you again on the 11th of May. And hopefully there'll be a few, uh, few listeners to the show as well who uh, hopefully will be inspired to you know, maybe book the afternoon off of work and get down to Berkshire and, uh, and see, the, um, and, and see a, a demonstration of the ritual, what it would have been 150 years ago. OK, Phil, so thanks very much again. I'll speak to you soon. Speak to you soon, Rob. Bye-bye. Thanks, Phil. Bye. Many thanks once again to Phil Konofsky of Greyfriars Lodge for coming back on In The Chair. As I mentioned, um, when I got confused, and I, I did mention it at the beginning, this is podcast number 31. So go to masonicpodcast.com forward slash 31 for those links. It's not 29 or 30. Those have already been and gone. I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you found that one interesting. Uh, we have a few more bits lined up. And as I said earlier, please do get in contact uh, with me. And let me know any questions or any thoughts you have. And of course, please remember, if you haven't already, and if, especially if you're doing if you're listening to this on iTunes through your phone through your iPad on your computer um, please pop on to the show page if you can give it a rating uh, write a small review that would be absolutely fantastic because it genuinely does help get the word out there about it um, I'm going to get ready because as I'm recording this this evening uh, I've got the Kennet Lodge oh that music's back again let me know what you think about the music as well actually but um, it's going to be our Kennet Lodge ladies night so I've got to have a shower prepare for that that's going to be a fantastic evening 
Um, hopefully the hangover will have ceased by uh, last week, uh, by next week even, and I will catch up with you then. Have a great week. Speak to you again soon. Thank you for listening to In The Chair. Visit masonicpodcast.com to see the show notes and in chair.co.uk for more resources to help you get the most out of your Masonic journey. If you enjoyed the show, please let us know by rating and reviewing it on iTunes. And remember to subscribe so you don't miss our next podcast. If you're not already, follow us on Twitter at Masonic Podcast. <laughs>